leading us in prayer. Uh, at this moment, I will uh, hand over to our speaker, uh, Shepherdess Beauty Cotella, to lead us uh, in this morning's devotion. Thank you, sir. Let me greet the saints of God in the name of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And welcome uh, those who are possibly joining us for the first time to day five uh, of our series, Oh, for that faith. This week we are praying for faith. We are praying for radical faith. Now, um, before I even continue, I, I want to let you know um, that uh, God has sent me uh, today. I thought I was going to get it, but God has sent me today with cap in hand. I come, I come to you, my brothers and sisters, like this, um, as directed uh, by the Father um, above. So I can't even shout. I, I have a tendency of getting overly excited. Uh, when the word uh, comes flooding, I lose control. But today I, I can't even shout because I, I, come, I come to beg, uh, I come to, to plead. In my language, we say, um, uh, sent, sent by God. Uh, you see, the, the faith that we are praying for um, this week, uh, it grows when, when the following four things, in my view, um, take place. Number one, prayer. Prayer strengthens our faith because you see, when we pray, we have an opportunity to talk and God is listening. So it's like you have the mic and God is sitting down and is listening to you. And that is an act that actually strengthens our faith. So that's the first thing. The second thing through which our faith grows is by the study of the scriptures. When we read the word of God, because remember the kind of faith that that we're looking for, the radical faith that we are praying for, is we want to be like Jesus. We want to be like God, and we want to we want the character of God to be reflected in us. And that, by the way, is one of the conditions for his second coming. We want to hasten the second coming of Christ. And to do that, we need to know more about Jesus. So when we study the scriptures, we get to find out more about him. And, and the more we know about him, the more we can be like him. So that's the second way in which we can grow our faith. Thirdly, I believe that fellowship, fellowship, when, when uh, is, it, is it Jesus who says where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there um, with them. So when we gather together with God's people, when we gather together as believers, that has the way of contributing to the growth of our faith. And then the fourth one, the fourth one by which our faith can grow is service. The fourth one by which our faith can grow is service. And, 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 and from my experience and from my observations, there are two sides to the coin of service. You see, when we serve truly and faithfully, I'm not talking about politicians now uh, who are busy uh, canvassing for votes, but when we truly and faithfully serve God, we are like Jesus. We're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. That's the one side of the coin of service. The other side of the coin of service is that when we serve truly and faithfully, we serve Jesus himself. So, so through acts of service, we get to be Jesus, but we also get to, to, to be, we get to serve Jesus. Yeah. So we serve Jesus, but we also be the ones that actually serve like Jesus. And so that's the, the, the two sides of the coin of service. And that is our our topic for today. We are praying for the faith to serve. If you like, we, were, we are praying to be faithful servants. In other words, we, want to, we don't want to just serve because there are many servants, all right, who are self-serving. There are many servants who are serving, looking beyond, looking at, okay, if I do this, like the teach for Ted servants, yeah, I do this for you, you do that for me. But this morning we are praying to not just serve with, with expectation of being given something in return by those whom we serve. Um, we are not serving as those who need the ones whom we are serving, but we want to serve faithfully. And so this morning we are praying for the faith to serve, full stop. In other words, we are here and we are saying, Lord, wherever you want to use us, 
use us. Wherever you want to send us, send us because we want to be more and more like you every day. Now let's look at the first side um, of the coin of service, the service which relieves the hunger of Jesus. Many of us are familiar with this text found in, in Matthew 25. I, I love it. When I read it, it disturbed me, but the more I read it, the more I, I've fallen in love with it. And, and we know this is a, there are many parables in Matthew 25. It is Jesus himself talking about his second coming. So he is giving us, he says this, the, the coming of the son of man will be like, and so he gives a number of parables in that verse, but he, he is the one talking. And, and for those of you who have those Bibles that have got the words of Jesus in red, here you will find those in red, and I've learned to take those words seriously. And so he says, when the son of man shall come, he will divide the people into two groups, the sheep on the right, this is the right, and the goats um, on the left. And he will say to the ones on the right, come, all ye blessed of my father, come and inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. As if they're asking, but why? You know, it's not there in the text, but it's as if they ask the question, why? And then listen to his response. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison. Jesus is being controversial here. And you came to me when I was in prison. Take note, he doesn't say what I was in prison for. But he says, I was in prison and you came to visit me. So come and inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And that's to the guys on the right. To the guys on the left, he says, of course, very painful words, which I don't think any of us in this platform this morning would want to hear. But he says, depart from me, you cursed. Depart into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. As if they too ask the question, why? He says, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was in prison, you did not visit me. And the question of course that they could ask, but it doesn't come across, but we didn't take your food. We did not take your drink. We didn't take your clothes. We didn't put you in prison. It doesn't seem to matter how I got hungry. It doesn't seem to matter how I got into prison. What matters is that I was hungry and you did not feed me. And I'm saying this to those of us who tend to sometimes um, um, analyze the needs of people. Why did they get this and why did they get that? The reason that they are hungry, the reason that they are poor is because they did not go to school. The reason that they, they, they are naked is because they don't know how to look. Up. It doesn't matter how they got there. Between God and them, he knows how they got there. But my role is simply to recognize Jesus in them and attend to Jesus in them. He will take care of the how they got there and the why they got there. That's none of my business. Please take note before I drop this parable. There are no crossbreeds. There are only sheep and goats in this parable. There is no in between. In other words, there are not those who say, but I, I don't have enough to give. Um, and so I would not be able to give. And so we will be spared because, well, we did not give because there were, it's just simply groups, all of us in two groups. The rich and the poor, in this case, are put in two groups. And you will find that in the poor, in the poor, there are the rich. In, in, I mean, among the, the, the guys on the left, the goats, there are the rich, right? You will find that among the, the sheep, the guys that are on the right, there are also the poor. All right, because we always have something to give. We always can serve the least and the lost in some form or another. Anyway, the, 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 the most fascinating thing though in this parable is that these guys, both of them, both the left and the right. Now we can understand when the left says this, they say, but you know what? When did we not serve you? When did we not serve you? And but also the guy on the right, when did we do this? And the reason they both do not know in this parable is because they didn't realize that the guys on the right, when they were serving the needy, when they were clothing the naked, when they were visiting the guys in prison, they didn't realize that they were visiting Jesus. The guys on the left, when they were walking past the street kids, the guys on the left, when they were walking past the job seekers, the guys on the left, when they were judging the drug addicts, the guys 
on the left, when they were judging the prisoners, they did not realize that they too were judging Jesus, that they too were, were in, 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 the, in, the, in the street children, in the people that were begging, in the poor, that they were also judging Jesus. So both of them did not know. But the privilege we have, you and me, my brothers and sisters, that we know this parable. We know now that when we serve the least, when we save the lost, when we clothe the naked, we are doing it to Jesus himself. He feels the pain. Um, he feels the hunger pains. He feels the cold from nakedness. He feels the loneliness on, when he's in, in hospital with no visitors. He feels the pain when he's in prison. In fact, Ellen White, in the book Desire of Ages, she, she, she talks about that there are many people who would find it a great privilege to visit the scenes of Christ's life while he was here on earth. So they spend lots of money going to Nazareth, going to Jerusalem, going to the Sea of Galilee. But she cautions us and she says, we need not go, please, my friend, if you have the money, but don't go there to find the footsteps of Jesus. He says, because we need not go to Nazareth, to Capernaum, or to Bethany in order to walk in the steps of Jesus. We shall find his footprints beside the sick bed in hospital. We shall find his footprints in the hovels of poverty. When you go to, 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 to the so-called informal settlements, these houses, the one house is standing next to the other, and in front of that house is the road, and the children are, play, are playing on the road. When we go there, my friends, there we will find the footsteps of Jesus because those are the places that Jesus went to. When we judge the people, those are the people that Jesus was hanging around with. So if you are looking to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, that is where you go. She says, in every place where there are human hearts in need of consolation, it, that is where the footsteps of Jesus are. In doing as Jesus did when he was here on earth, we shall walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And so this morning, as we pray for the faith to serve, we are simply saying, Lord, we want to walk in your footsteps. We want to walk in your footsteps. We are here willing, send us where you want us to go. Our president, when he was opening parliament, the, the, the president of South Africa, he sang the song, which brings tears to my eyes. It is a powerful song um, by, by the late, I forget his name now, my goodness, um, by the late Huma Segela. The, the, the song, of course, is, is taken from the Bible, Send Me. He says, I want to be there in the places where the people of God need help. I want to be there. And today we pray for that kind of faith, which stops asking who took your clothes, but the faith that recognizes that you are naked and I'm clothing you, but I'm clothing Jesus in you. The faith that stops asking, but who are the people that are taking the food of other people? We can do that. We can still go and find justice for them. But in the meantime, they are hungry. Feed them, then go and find justice. That's the first point of faith. Before I close, I want to go to, I mean, that's the first coin of service. I want to go to the second side of service, the other side, where in serving them, we get to be like Jesus. I don't know if you can picture this. On the other side, in the street kid who is holding hands um, next to the window, when you're stopping at the robot, there's Jesus there. So you get to be the one that recognizes Jesus in that person. You feed Jesus. But on this side, when you get to do that, you also get to be like Jesus. Um, Wayne Dyer had a phrase. Um, he's, he's now late. He had a phrase that I love. The first time I came across it, he said, be Jesus to people. Be Jesus to people. So when we relieve the hunger, we become Jesus to people. So we, in, in a way, we become Jesus to Jesus in people. So the other side um, of the coin of service, just through service, we get to be like Jesus. Through service, we get to serve as Jesus served. We get to serve as Jesus serves. And that is a very high calling because Jesus, Jesus, my friend, if we were to serve like Jesus, this world would be different. If the how many, 200, 300 of us here this morning were to go out this morning, having made up our minds, we are going to go out there and serve Jesus in people, number one. Number two, we are going to go out there and serve like Jesus. I promise you, Jesus would come much sooner if we were to be, listen, Jesus served all the way to the cross. All 
all the way to be hung on the cross. He was, in fact, while hanging there in excruciating pain, Jesus was still serving. He looks to them that are putting nails on his hand. He says, forgive them. That's an act of service. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. That is an act of service. And that's what we call serving like Jesus. While he's standing there, there's a young man on, on his side who recognizes that this is the son of God. He, 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 he is hanging on the cross dying, but he's giving out tickets to heaven. I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. So when we serve, yes, we serve Jesus in people, but we also serve like Jesus served. For three years, Jesus literally served a bunch of sinners, 12 to be exact. A bunch of, he knew there were sinners. For those of you here who are too holy to serve sinners, can I tell you, if you want to be like Jesus, my friend, you got to get used to serving those who you think have sinned, those who you believe are the scum of the earth. Jesus served sinners. You don't believe me. Jesus served Peter. Peter, who he knew was going to deny him. But, but Jesus, when they were in the upper room, he, he actually took a towel and he took water. He went on his knees to wash the feet of the same guy who was going to deny him tomorrow. You don't believe me. Jesus served Judas. He served a guy that he knew had already sold him. It was just a matter of time where he would just now make the exchange. Otherwise, he, served, he had sold him. Jesus served those who sold him. And so the kind of faith that we are praying for, guys, the kind of faith that we are praying for, my brothers and my sisters, is the faith to serve, to serve even those who sold us. Them selling us is their business. Us serving them is our business. It's a business between us and God. So in some cases, you may look like a fool serving people that have sold you. People can come to you and say, do you know that the one that you are busy serving was saying X, Y, Z about you yesterday? It doesn't matter. That's their problem. My problem is I want to go to heaven. My problem and my aim is I want to be like Jesus. So that they can sell me. That's their business. But my business is that I want to be more like Jesus. And if Jesus puts them in front of me to serve them, I'm going to serve them because I want to go to heaven. Let them sell, I will serve. Let them sell me, I will serve. And speaking of selling, I'm closing now. As if Jesus knew that at some point we're going to say, ah, ah, but you know what? Lord, this is too much. I'm not Jesus. I'm just a mere human. He gave us an example. I have no time to talk about it. But he gave us an example of a guy who I believe epitomized that verse which says, well done, good and faithful servant. For um, you were faithful in little things. I will now put you in charge of much. And the guy I'm talking about is Joseph. I love the story of Joseph. And I'm going to comment to you this morning that the, the faith of Joseph. Yes. Yes, the faith of Jesus. But I want to commend you the faith of Joseph. Go and read. But don't read that Joseph who was betrayed. But go and read about Joseph, the servant. This young man actually was sold by the guys he went to serve. He had gone to see on the welfare of the guys and they sold him. And the next thing he finds himself on, on a, a caravan to Egypt. And on the way to Egypt, and what says, he made the God of Jacob, the God of Joseph. So he arrives in Egypt a slave, yes, but he also arrives in Egypt a servant of God. He arrives and he finds himself a slave. And the Bible says, whatever he touched, tend to go. This is me now paraphrasing. Whatever he touched, tend to go. Joseph walks into Egypt with a mightiest touch, but he touches things as he is serving. And he kept, he kept getting betrayed. He gets betrayed by Mrs. Potiphar while he is serving them. But he doesn't stop serving. He ends up in prison, all right? And in prison, Joseph continues to serve. And while he's serving that, God places people in their life. Because some of us want to succeed in life. We want to go high in life, but we don't want to serve anything or anyone. And so as we close today, we are simply praying for their faith to serve. Full stop. We are asking God for the faith to serve truly, the faith to serve faithfully, regardless of our pain, regardless of our grief, regardless of who did what to us, regardless of how we got into the place that we are in. Whether they sold us or not, it doesn't matter. Lord, can you help us to serve 
faithfully. We want to be good and faithful servants. You know, my wish, brothers and sisters, is that when I get to heaven, Jesus can say that to me, well done, good and faithful servant. But I also wish that there would be one person, one person who would say to me, thank you for serving Jesus in me. Lord Jesus, this morning, we thank you for the privilege of service, to be like you, but to also serve you in people. Give us the courage, therefore, as we go forward, but give us also the opportunities to serve. Can you give each and every one of us here today an opportunity to serve someone today? In Jesus' name we pray, amen.